Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are going to discuss how to play the King's Gambit from the white side. King's Gambit is an opening which is not so popular, not so played in the middle level, even in the higher level. And if you are a club level player, I guess you must learn how to play this opening because your opponent is often not prepared how to play against this opening. So I get, as I think that you are having a good chance practically on the board and off the board to surprise your opponent and take some points. So we are going to discuss the uh, opening King's Gambit by looking at a game of Iano Pumniachi, the specialist in the King's Gambit who's recently made a course on King's Gambit versus Kirill Alexenko. Uh, the game is going to be extremely well mannered so it's going to be fun. So let's check it out. So Iano Pumniachi with the white pieces opens up the game with one e4 and Kirill with the black pieces replied with e5. So both the players are extremely strong player. Kirill is having the rating of 2700 and Iano Pomiachi no explanation needed. 2800 very strong uh, grandmaster going to fight for the world championship title against Ding Liren. e5 and on the second move we are going to surprise our opponent by playing the move f4. Often our opponent is prepared a move like my 2f3 from the white side, but the moment we play f4, he's going to get shocked. And now after f4, there are really two options for black to continue. He can either capture or he can go for playing the move d5. These two moves are the best and the most playable move. So in the video, we are going to discuss what happens if black goes for the move d5. But if if you need some introduction, I can tell you what happens after e into f4. After e into f4, we are simply going to develop a knight. Our idea is to simply develop a bishop, etc. And in this position, if black goes for defending the pawn on f4 by playing the move g5, here we are going to play the move h4, hitting the pawn on g5. And in this position, we are the pawn on g5 is hit by the two pieces, the knight and the pawn. He can't make a move like f6, which is extremely bad because of knight into f6, knight into g5. And after f into g5, we have queen h5 check, king goes, queen takes, and this position is already uh, winning for white because after king here, like, I guess you can simply play this and you lose the rook. Even this is winning because after king e7, queen e5 check and check. So f6 is not possible but the best move is to play g4 very sens sensible you are hitting the knight and here we are going to play the move knight to e5 centralizing our knight and also hitting the pawn on g4 here black can continue this position by playing two moves either knight f6 or either h5 defending the pawn if black defends the pawn with h5 now we are going to play bishop c4 hitting the pawn on f7 black half to defend it by playing knight h6 and now we are going to play d4. We have a proper control in the center. Here we are hitting the pawn on f4. So actually after d4, black is not having really anything to defend the pawn. He can go for playing a move like queen f6, but after knight c3, white is already preparing knight d5 and it's very dangerous for black. If you try to make a move like c6, now knight d2 and the pawn on f4 is still hanging. So it's good for white. White is nearly having a roughly plus 2 advantage. So after d4, if black goes for playing d6, which is the best, now we are going to play knight to d3. Now the pawn on f4 is hit twice. So after f3, which is the fourth move for black to continue the position, or else we are simply going to capture the pawn with the bishop, knight c3, queen e2, log castle, and white is better. So after f3, now we are going to capture the pawn, and here black is going to play knight to c6. Because if it tries to catch, uh, capture the pawn after queen into f3, white is really having no issues. Bishop g5 is coming in the air. f7 is too weak. So it's already good for white. So bishop knight c6. So black wants that we capture the pawn so that he gets his opportunity to develop the bishop. But we are also not going to capture the pawn. We are going to play bishop e3 defending a pawn. And in this position, the idea of white is we want to put a knight to f4, knight to c3, Going to e2 followed by long castle and once white has successfully done long castle he's having no issues 
why it is all good so it is a move if uh after h4 g4 knight here if black goes for playing h5 in this position if black goes for playing knight to f6 here we are going to play knight into g4 simply capturing the pawn knight into e4 if you capture the knight we can simply capture the with the queen and white is good in this position uh the queen bishop is coming knight pawn push f4 is hanging in long castle white is good in this position trust me and if you try if you are thinking a move like d5 hitting the queen queen f4 nothing is happening okay so knight into e4 capturing the pawn and now we are going to play d3 hitting the knight knight to g3 hitting the rook because that's the best move in this position and the most logical move here we are going to capture the pawn on f4 surprised if you capture the rook which is the fine move but here comes queen e2 check you can't play the bishop because of two move mate so you must play queen and now comes knight check king move bishop takes pawn king takes knight check king move knight takes the queen bishop takes and here after knight c3 bishop takes in the position black is having this uh, my two minor piece was with rook and rook against the queen but after king d2 check king d1 uh this position though black is materially up but the coordination there is no coordination between the pieces of black like queen h5 is a very dangerous threat the king is still in the center i guess uh if black plays 100% accurately then only black is fine or else there are too many actual practical problems in this position for white in the uh, for black in this position and white is all good so yeah. uh so if after knight g6 bishop into f4 the best continuation for black is to play uh, queen e7 check bishop e2 knight takes okay knight takes is a bad move but but yeah you have to capture and after bishop g5 the queen is hanging and the on the next move we are going to play knight f6 and the game is lost so for example if queen to e6 we are going to give a check knight king goes knight d5 and it's a me so yeah so basically after bishop e2 the best variation to continue for black is to play rook b8 rook g8 and after takes uh, sorry takes bishop f2 rook into g2 knight c3 knight to c6 Here white is going to play queen g2 and white's idea is to uh white's idea is to play queen e3 long castle and white is fine. So yep, I guess I have given you a detailed introduction about what happens if black captures the pawn. Now we are going to discuss what happened in the game. D5 was played in the game by Alexenko and here Nepo went for the move e into d5. He he has already prepared a course, so he is playing his preparation, so he can learn from it. So after e into d5, we have e into f4. If you really uh, you really don't want to capture the pawn on d5 because of knight c3, and simply provides the white the tempos to develop the piece and attack your queen. You have to move your queen, and after pawn takes, queen takes, bishop e2, and on the next move, white is going to develop his knight, hitting the queen, long castle, the rook file is open, white is good. and if white tries to, black tries to make a move like bishop g4 because if you try to play knight f3 he's going to capture and gf3 is not a good move so after bishop g4 white is going to play the move d4 hitting the queen and after queen e7 something like that knight d5 is coming uh knight d5 knight d5 is coming up and the knight the queen is simply attacked if you try to make a move like queen over here knight into c7 and you lose the rook and if you try to make a move like queen e6 we have a move like h3 even uh like after bishop takes we can take with the knight short castle and as usual white is too good in this position so uh so pawn takes that's the reason black captured the pawn knight to f3 bishop to d6 in this position if black captures the pawn on d5 you are still going to play knight c3 queen move bishop e2 bishop d6 for example short castle knight e7 or let's check knight f6 is actually not a good move because of bishop b5 check and rook e1 is coming in so you have to play king f8 
and this position after d4 uh practically it's not good a not pleasant position though black is a pawn up but no coordination between pieces the queen is still in the center the king can't can no longer castle it's too hard for black to continue the position so that's the reason black really didn't win for capturing the pawn because white gets a huge amount of compensation for that pawn so you can definitely gamble with that pawn the so bishop d6 was played by alexenko d4 by nepo c6 black is offering the pawn on c6 for to white because the reason if white tries to capture the pawn black can simply develop his pieces harmoniously and black is extremely fine in this position but that's the reason nepo didn't capture the pawn knight f6 queen e2 check and get, as remember this is a very critical move in this position you must give a check uh because after queen e2 check if queen e7 you can happily trade the queens and now bishop c4 and this position is extremely fine for white because now the queens have been traded so there's no real issues materially the uh, materially the position is equal as well as uh, positionally because after pawn takes now knight takes knight takes bishop takes um this position is good for white because the white with bishop is extremely strong if you try to play a move like knight c6 bishop d2 and now white can long castle rook e1 c4 is coming in white is having a strong center control which gives white a good advantage so that's the reason after queen e2 check black went for the move king to f8 if you try to make a move like king bishop to e7 which is not a good move you can simply now capture the pawn and after knight into c6 you can now capture the f4 pawn because the bishop is no longer protecting the pawn and after knight d4 knight d4 queen d4 bishop to e5 is a good move and the position is extremely fine in this position for white because nothing is happening you can long castle on the next move like if queen d8 not allowing white to long castle but now bishop into f6 you can't capture you have to capture with the g pawn and now you can play queen e3 develop the bishop and do a short castle because now black is not going to do a short castle because the g file is completely open so yeah so king to f8 was played in the game and now knight e5 by nepo centralizing the knight and now the idea of white is to capture the pawn on f4 pawn takes bishop takes knight to c6 and now finally long castle by nepo you see how he played the game uh, i'm going to give a summary in the end long castle by white bishop to g4 which was a blunder by alexenko the best move in this position would have been to play bishop to e6 but it doesn't feel right because you are making your piece extremely passive but but that's the point in this king's gambit you need to be prepared extremely well or else if you are going to play on the board with the black pieces you can with the white pieces you can simply burst out your opponent okay that's the power of the preparation and the king's gambit yeah the so bishop g4 what was the idea knight into g4 and a bishop into f4 check and after bishop into f4 white is simply going to move the king knight into g4 queen into g4 bishop to c7 and uh materially speaking the position is equal but positionally speaking white is completely winning this position because black king is in the open f file white king is extremely safe on the king queen side nothing's happening so after bishop c7 now just look at the way nepo continue queen f3 now the e5 a d5 pawn is completely hanging you can't really protect it the only way to protect it by by playing knight e7 and you really don't want to uh simply undevelop your piece which man here white can simply play bishop d3 followed by rook f1 and nothing is happening black is extremely bad that's the reason bishop to b6 was played in the game and here comes knight to d5 queen to d6 you can't really capture the pawn over here because of queen h3 check and the game is lost because if you play here rook into d4 queen a uh, bishop into bishop b5 check and the game is lost and if you play the king over here knight e7 check if you play the king over here knight to c6 check and you lose the queen so basically the queen game is lost after queen h3 check uh that's the reason 
and that's the reason queen to d6 was played to prevent queen a3 and now comes the move bishop to c4. f6 because if you try to capture this pawn now actually simply rook h f1 and I guess this is a bit too scary and now this is hanging so everything's hanging like f6 we have c3. If you move the bishop we simply have knight f4. Everything is happening everything is collapsing for black. That's the stuff after bishop c4 f6 was played but after knight f4 rook e8 c3 simply defending the d4 pawn now king tried to run away or else uh, the rook can't get or else white is simply going to burst out the black's position king e7 rook check knight check knight take the rook trade king b8 b uh, g3 bishop to c7 knight to c5 queen to d8 bishop to d5 uh, knight b5 b b4 uh, you don't really want to play knight to c6 or else this position is completely winning for white again. So after g4, rook here takes, takes, takes and on the move number 28, only 28 move, Alexenko resigned the game. Definitely there is nothing black can do, black is a piece down and nothing is happening. So just giving a quick review, the way Nepo played, he captured the pawn, he developed his minor pieces. He gave this queen to check because I guess the games that I have played or uh, that I've seen of Nepo Miniachi, this move is a very critical move guys. You need to remember this move. You move the king or else if the queen comes in between, you can simply trade the queen's bishop c4. You can do a short castle and white is simply a healthy. White is, can simply enjoy the game. And, and yeah, king move. Now you centralize the knight, you capture the pawn, long castle. You have this, or else, if in this position, if you give white the opportunity to continue the game, white is simply going to play g4, g5, and simply going to collapse, simply expand on the king's side, bishop g2, rook h1, simply crush the black king. That's the idea of black. So, guys, this was the way how you can play the king's gambit to surprise your opponent, and I guess it is a good opening if you are a beginner. If you want to score some serious points in the tournament in the club level player in the club level tournaments so i hope that this video must have helped you to improve your chess level and skill if it did then make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel if you are new to our channel and make sure to click the notification bell for new upcoming videos and make sure to share this video with everyone so i'm going to see you soon till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess